What happened when, when I mean, you, you then get in a van and you are mm. taken to a police station? What, what happened there? Mm. Um, the journey in the van took over an hour because of the M25 being closed. I was handcuffed the entire way. My devices, everything was taken from me. Um, and I was then, you know, got to the police station and I thought, phew, we're here. I'll just quickly answer all their questions. They'll ring the the number on the back of my press yeah. card. They'll verify I'm a journalist and and I'll be on my way. Um, all the you know standard welfare questions were asked about whether I have any serious medical conditions they should be aware of. Mm. I was then searched again. I'd been searched once on the side of the road. Um, I was then searched again by a custody officer. Um, I. I didn't have to get undressed. I had to take my shoes and socks off, but that was as far as that went. Um, but my DNA swabs were taken inside of my mouth. All my fingerprints were taken. Handprints were taken. Um, I had uh, mug shots taken as well. Um, I had to remove all of my jewellery, and that was all um, checked in as well. Um, and then I was led to a, a, a custody cell. And throughout this, of course, your phone had already been taken from you, so yeah. you had no way of, of reporting back to Nobody colleagues knew. or, or, in or fact, letting uh, us know you were safe, having been <laughs> up a bridge 10 minutes previously. At one point, LBC reported me as a missing person mm. because they just hadn't, no one had heard from me. You were. Yeah, no one had heard from me, and we, we couldn't get any answers from Hertfordshire Constabulary either, who's, you know, Force Area um, Global, the parent company of LBC, knew I was in, and, um, you know, had called to, to give them my location and said they were very concerned. But, yeah, it, was, it, it wasn't until the uh, metal door of the police cell closed yes. behind me that it really dawned on me that, oh, my gosh, I can't believe where I am, looking at that metal toilet in the corner of the room. And... I just lost it. I did just, you? I, yeah. I, I'd been of fine up. And, I'd of been, I'd did. been fine up until that point, and then I was in that cell for five hours, and I just sat there and cried. Yeah. It was, it was so scary, and it, you just can't believe you're in that situation. And I, at one point, I was I felt ridiculous, but I was lent up against the door, just thinking, please, just open, mm. just open. And I, I was allowed, you know, to go to a, a yard. Mm which was, you know, just a small um, area of, of concrete. Um, and I think the custody officers, they were they were sympathetic yeah. because they knew I was a journalist. And they were expecting it to be sorted quite quickly. Or just sympathetic? I think the two officers that arrested me actually at the end seemed quite embarrassed. Yeah. Because one of them then saw me get upset and he was then, you know, turned from, you know, Mr Nasty officer sure. who'd arrested me in the first place to then saying... Oh, they'll, you, you'll be out soon and you'll be all right. And, so and why were you in at all, of course? It's a, it mm. should be above his pay grade. Mm. What were you told upon your release? I have to use the word release. <laughs> upon your release. I was told that... Um, the they'd... short walk to freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they'd made their inquiries yeah. and I was being released with no further action because they had established that I wasn't part of the protest. It took them five hours, apparently, to uh, to verify the number on the back of my press card and to make a call to LBC and do their cross-checks that I had never been involved in an arrest before. And there we go. That's lucky. <laughs> um, I, I mean, th that's the tension here now, isn't it? Because understandably... People are are outraged by uh, the, the, the treatment you received, and the two other people arrested as well. Baroness uh, Chakrabarti used to head up Liberty, saying on LBC earlier that they are effectively shutting down free press, the, the free media in this country. The fact that you produced your press card, which my late father Charlotte used to remind me of the importance of having your press card with you at all times, even even if you know there's some sort of incident and you're on the scene first, you can get the police to talk to you by showing it. That was the idea. But but the, the counterbalance to that is they had they believed that the two officers who arrested you believed they had cause to s sincerely suspect that you were involved in the protest. Essentially, they thought my press card was fake. They must have done because it. Or, or you were a journalist activist, perhaps. Yeah. I, I just I'm just thinking out loud. But it has the name of the company that I work for on the press card, and I explained who I was and. I'd, yeah, it's it was it was terrifying, and they knew they knew they knew I was that I was a journalist. And that is, uh, of course, the point at which I'm duty bound to remind everybody listening that the government currently want more powers to police peaceful protests of this kind. It's good to have you back, Charlotte. I, I shall uh, I shall bake you a cake with a file in it. <laughs> Thank you. This Christmas, <laughs> and, and are you okay? 
Yes, I'm, I am. I'm all right, thank you. And uh, yeah, everyone's support's been brilliant. Dare I suggest that you got told off by your mum? <laughs> she was so worried. There you go. She was, but yes, yeah, she's she's furious at, at the situation. Yeah. Uh, but yes. Well, you did nothing. As you know, you're just doing a great job, as you always do. 